first, let me just say thank you for being a member of my inner circle. There are a bunch of weird things I'm going to comment on today. I don't know if you saw President Biden mumbling through his comments during Israeli President Isaac Herzog's visit to the White House, but it's made a lot of people concerned about Biden's mental fitness and ability to serve as president. Remember now, this is a president who's vice president. Kamala Harris is clearly incapable of being president and, in fact, incapable of being vice president. Well, addressing Herzog, Biden gave a few words and then began looking down and mumbling the rest of his remarks. Just listen to this audio. And we brought Israelis and Palestinians together at a political level, and they are and uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, and uh, as I uh, affirmed the Prime Minister. If that doesn't sober you and make you a little worried about the current so-called commander-in-chief, clearly he's not capable of command, I don't know what it'll take, but every time I look around, there's something weird going on with Joe Biden. Now, by contrast... President Trump continues to dominate the Republican nominating process. 76% of Republican voters expect Donald Trump to be the presidential nominee. In the latest Rasmussen Report survey, Trump crossed the 51% favorability line among all likely voters. He'd been very strong among Republicans. This is, I think, first time in a long time he's been above 50% with all likely voters. He's at 73% favorable among Republicans and 47% with independents. The poll also found that 68% of all voters, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, expect Trump to secure the nomination. Of those, 37% believe it is very likely he will get it. According to a Turning Point USA straw poll, when asked who their first choice for Republican primary is, Trump received 85.7% of the votes. I have to tell you, when I saw this, 85.7%, I thought it was impossible. No politician can get that kind of vote. Now, Turning Point USA is a very conservative group. Trump had just spoken to them, but that's still an astonishing number. Michigan businessman Perry Johnson, who, by the way, is very smart, but clearly highly unlikely to get the nomination. Nonetheless, he came in second at 8%. DeSantis got 4.3%, and Ramaswamy got 2%. So you really have a fascinating period. And you'll notice almost all the other traditional candidates are nowhere, at least in Turning Point USA. I personally believe Trump is, for all practical purposes, the nominee, barring something extraordinary like a heart attack. If he remains healthy, I don't see how anybody is going to beat him for the nomination. Now, in another example of the insanity of the left, California Democrat Julia Brownlee has introduced a, quote, amend the Code for Marriage Equality Act, which would amend a number of existing laws by striking the words husband and wife and replacing it with married couple, married person, or person who has been but is no longer married to. The federal laws would be affected include Ethics in Government Act of 1978, the Family and Medical League Act of 1993, and the Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971. The effort of the left to erase all traditional terms and all traditional language continues. By the way, under the Biden administration, at least 541,000 immigrants lacking visas have been granted entry into the United States in less than two years through the use of parole. Parole authority has been a key part of the Biden administration's plan to address the surge of migrants at the southern border. Of course, that means They're not addressing it at all. They're simply allowing them to go around the country. According to Homeland Security, the Biden administration is expected to increase their use of parole authority and to expand it to allow migrants from Colombia, El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. So what you have is the Biden administration decided that they're going to deal with illegal immigration by simply allowing them to come into the U.S., and that will then be considered a victory. I should tell you that our next Inner Circle Zoom town hall meeting will be on Wednesday, August 2nd at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. I hope you'll join me. You can register for the event by logging into your Inner Circle membership account. You can also submit your questions in advance by going to gingrich360.com slash questions. And if you have friends who would like to be part of the Inner Circle, please ask them to join us. 
by going to newtsinnercircle.com.